it's definitely something behind the red sky in Russia. Let's show you what happened, though, in order to get down into this and talk about maybe what potentially is happening. The sky was lit up blood red color in Russia, symbols of what we've seen in China earlier this year. This was reported in St. Petersburg, Russia. As you can see, residents looking out of windows and that the sky is so red that it literally made the water reflect a red color as well. Now, a lot of talks have been said that Elon Musk Starlink potentially could be being blocked by Russia in an operation to stop them from using it in the skies for military operations, but that is unconfirmed as far as right now. Usually, when the sky turns red, it could be an omen, but sailors say that this is dust particles that's in the atmosphere. Another thing could be that basically the war that's been happening in Ukraine could have caused some of these break-off particles of dust from different technology to float around in the atmosphere and suspend itself. What's more strange is that none of the officials have come out and said, don't worry, these are just lights from, you know, uh, a boat or, you know, this is just something happening in the atmosphere is normal. There's been no reports of anything talking about why this red sky is happening. So that could mean that if it is something to do militarily, it must be a hush mouth thing told for news media not to get involved. But, however, as far as right now, residents are getting images and video of what's happening. There has been no other reported information on this event. Another big, big question is, check out this photo, them talking about China's artificial sun sets a record, and it shows a red sky. The question is, is these artificial suns being tested and causing these colors to appear? So, all right, everybody. All praises, infinite honor and glory be to Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh by Shem Kakodash, double honor. As always, to Yah, to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, peace, love, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. How by Yah from Adabada, the house of David, the brothers laboring day in and day out on the four corners of the earth, giving all diligence to make their calling of election sure, helping seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord, Allah Yahweh, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh is, is at hand. And, and to the Akim, the brothers, and Akwath, the Akyawa, Akwath Yah, who also listen and believe on the glorious gospel of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh is being preached worldwide into you, I say Shalom. So I'm going to jump right into it, wasting no time. As you saw the video going into the blood red sky in Russia, and it says incredibly apocalyptic. Now, this also happened in China earlier this year, a few months ago. So I'm going to jump right into it with these signs, these tokens, which are symbols. These signs and tokens are the symbols of the coming of our Lord. Hamashiach Yahushai. Now, as we saw that Jake that was doing the video, that Jake you know, who are in plenty of other Israelites, two thirds and the heathen and the wicked are dismayed at these signs. So let's get a, the first precept going into the fact that a lot of our people don't know what to make of this because only the elect, the anointed, right? The initiated, those who have been predestined, preordained to receive salvation are going to actually be able to receive the understanding to see the signs of the coming of the son of man. This is the book of Jeremiah 10 and verse 1. It says, Hear ye the word which Yahweh speaketh unto you, O house of Israel, Yasha Allah. Thus saith Yahweh, Learn not the way of the heathen, which are the ways of the world. So this is said through Jeremiah and throughout countless prophets, major and minor prophets in the Bible, that what? To not be in the ways of the, of the Gentiles, the other nations. So it says, learn not the way of the heathen, Jer Jeremiah 10 and 2, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven and that the, 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 the inhabitants of the earth are dismayed at the signs of heaven, which this sign that happened in China and now in Russia, you know, the, the, the chariots, the blood moons, all of these signs, these symbols, right? These tokens, the chariots that a few years ago uh, that were over the moon, these are all signs 
But but Yahweh while Yahweh Shah said, Don't be, don't be dismayed. It says, at the signs of heaven, and these signs are in the heavens, which can be seen here in the earth. For the heathen are dismayed at them, because these other nations are dismayed. And two-thirds of our people are spiritual heathen. So they are dismayed, right? They're confused. They have a lack of understanding of what this is because they lack spirituality and they ultimately lack the gift of faith. They lack the gift, they lack the gift of faith and understanding to be able to make sense of what's going on. Why did that happen in China? Why is it happening now? And what, what's going on? This is how we know that these signs, these symbols, you know, these tokens, and let me get it right here. Daniel are signs from heaven. First and foremost, let me get this quick precept because what it said was, you know, don't be dismayed as a heathen. And here's why the heathen and the two-thirds of our people are dismayed. They're confused. They're flabbergasted. Right? They don't have understanding of what's going on. Daniel 12 and 10, it says, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, speaking of the believers. But the wicked shall do wickedly. Two-thirds, the heathen, the wicked, the Gentiles, and the Israelites, you know, that are in a Gentile state of mind, the rebellious house, the children of disobedience. And none of the wicked shall understand. See, none of the wicked, none of those is where it wasn't intended to be given to, to understand it. None of them are going to truly understand. Understand what? The wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is found in this Bible, the word, the prophecies, the signs, the symbols, the tokens. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Only the wise are going to understand, as it says in 2 Ezra 12, verses 36 through 37. That to teach this word to the wise of the people whose hearts thou knowest may comprehend and keep those secrets. So this word is only for the wise, only for the believers, the elect. The elect are the only ones that can perceive this truth. So let's further show that. Let's further show these signs, these tokens, these symbols. Second Ezra 9, starting at verse 1. Second Ezra 9 and verse 1, and it reads, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And how do you measure the time? Through the prophecies. That's how we know what time we're in now. You know, it's because of prophecy how we know time. Because the literal year and what time it is, literally, since the Lord was here, we don't know. As it says in Daniel 7 and 25, he would think to change the times and the laws. Continuing on. Measure thou the time diligently in itself, which is through the prophecies. And when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So the coming of our, our Lord and Savior, Hamashiach Yahweh is at hand because of the signs, the symbols, the tokens, which are the prophecies ultimately. All the visions that last of the end time visions are coming to pass in these last days. Once again, that's by way of the signs, the tokens, the symbols, the prophecies. It's undeniable for those that are in the spirit. So let's continue on. Let's continue on with the book of 2nd Ezra. Let's stay right here in 2nd um, Ezra. Let's go over to the 13th chapter. 2nd Ezra 13, and let's pick up at about verse 20, 29, right? Showing the signs, the tokens, the symbols. Matter of fact, um, yeah, let's start at verse 20, 29. The second answer is 13 and 29. It says, Behold, the days come, and what are those days? The last days, the end times, when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. So the, the days have come when the promises of salvation are at hand. We are, we are in those times. Verse 30, second answer is 13 and 30. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. So the coming, the signs of the coming of our Lord Yahweh Shai is an astonishing sign that goes back to the being dismayed. It's an astonishment. It's dismayed the heathen, right? They are mind blown. They, they don't know what to make of what's going on on the earth with all the calamities and things that's going on. Those are part of the signs as well because it's all prophecy. So it says, at the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. Verse 31, 2 Ezra 13 31, and one shall undertake to fight against another it says one city against another one place against another one people against another and one realm against another and that would be the coming of, of Yahweh Shai the spirit realm is coming to war 
you know, the, 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 the third heaven is coming to war with the first heaven. You know, the angels and Yahweh Shai, the Elohim are coming to war with Esau, Edom, and the nations that's going to be gathered together to make war against Yahweh Shai. Right? They got their space force out there, so on and so forth. So that, that there's going to be war that's going to be made. That's why the scriptures say in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. So that's one realm against another. Verse 32. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass and the signs shall happen. So the signs are actually happening now. These signs, these tokens, these symbols are actually happening now. Right? The scripture said better is the end of the thing than the beginning thereof. So we're at the end, which is the time of the, of the Most High's visitation through Yahweh Shai and the deliverance of the children of Israel. Let's read that again. Second Ezra 13 and 32. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass and the signs shall happen, which I showed thee before. And then shall my son be declared, which is the coming of Yahweh Shai. As it says in um, Matthew 24 and verses 30 through 31. Right. It says all the tribes of the earth are going to mourn, you know, at that sign, the coming of Yahweh Shai. And so let's read that again. And then and then shall my son be declared whom thou sawest as a man ascending. He's going to ascend back from the heavens to the earth He'll come back down to the earth. Right. Which is the coming of our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. So those are getting into the signs. The tokens. Let's get a few more and close it out. This is, um, let's get the additions to Esther, the book of Esther and the Apocrypha, the 10th chapter, and go to the 9th verse. So this is Esther and the Apocrypha 10 and verse 9. It says, And my nation is this Israel, Yasha Allah, it says, which cried to, to, to the Most High, or to Yahweh, and were saved. For Ha'adawan hath saved his people, and it says, and Ha'adawan have delivered us from all those evils. So this is going to happen again, as in the time of Esther. There's nothing new under the sun. So what was said here was Ha'adawan, the Lord, Yahweh, while Yahweh Shai, delivered his people. And he heard the cries of the children of Israel and delivered us from all evils, it says. Continuing on, Esther 10 and 9, and the Most High hath wrought signs and great wonders. And he's done this through signs and great wonders which he's doing again, which have not been done among the Gentiles. And these signs and wonders have not been done amongst the Gentiles. That shows you that Yahweh is the only true power. Because why, why, why hasn't any, any other people's gods that, that believe in these different gods they believe in, which are no gods, why haven't they done these signs and wonders? Why don't they have a book of prophecy which foretells the end before the beginning? and gives understanding of what's going on, who the nations are, who the children of Israel are. You know, the why, the, the, the why, the how, you know, and what's going on. Where's their prophecy? Where's their understanding amongst the nation? They don't have that, right? So that's only through the God of the Israelites, which is Yahweh, while Yahweh Shai and his son. But let's show that further. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, 36 and verse 6, it says, show new signs, and we're seeing that, right? These red skies is popping up in different places here in these last days. Those are those are signs. I did a video about two or three weeks ago on my page, Sakala Barakim, you know, and on this on my page, it was showing red up in the atmosphere, red spots that was spotted by pilots that was taking pictures of it. These are other new and strange, uh, strange signs and wonders for those that, that can receive it, those that believe. Ecclesiasticus 36 and 6, it says, show new signs, and it says, and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm, that thou may set forth thy wondrous works. So we're seeing the wondrous works of Yahweh, while Yahweh Shai. We're seeing the wondrous works, which we know our Lord is soon to come. So we don't have much time left here so that's why it's even more apparent and paramount that we we be in this word and repent and truly turn back to the to the God of heaven and earth. You know, that's why it, it's so imperative to do so, because the signs, the tokens, the prophecies, the very we're at the very, very last end. 
John 4 in verse 48. And it reads, Then said Yahweh Shai unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. So except our people see these signs and wonders, they're not going to believe. Right? They're not going to believe. Now the elect are going to return because that, that is that is the will of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. But these signs and wonders also aid the coming of the Lord and show forth these symbols, these tokens, is how could these things happen if they weren't from the Most High, who people call God? Once again, how are these things happening? We, we can go and authenticate that in the Word. Everything that we're saying, all the believers worldwide, is pushing this Word in truth and sincerity. We can go forth in, in the Word, the script, which is the Holy Scriptures, and show that what we're saying is according to the God of heaven and earth. Who else can do that? No one. Matthew 12, showing that our power is the only power. Matthew 12 and verse 39. And we'll close it out with this. Matthew 12 and 39. But he answered and said unto them, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, which is our people, two-thirds of the nation of Israel. They're seeking what? After a sign. But they want something that is going to be to their to their understanding. Right? They want the signs that make sense to them. They want the most high to come down. And, and do wonders himself when the Most High is far above and beyond that. Right? The Most High, you know, is on, is on another level. And he he's never going to come down to the level of man just to be able to appease the minds of these infidels. Right? Because through, it's through the Spirit how the Most High first speaks unto us. And he'll manifest that physically as well like the cherry that was seen at the camp on um, this past Wednesday. You know, today is Tuesday night, but this past last Wednesday night at camp, there was a cherry that came, you know, by by the camp during the lesson. That's the most high speaking. The scriptures say in Job, the 33rd chapter, the most high speaketh once, yet twice, yet man perceive it not. And why do men not perceive the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh because they're not in the spirit of the Lord, of Ha'adawan. Let's read it again and close it out. Matthew 12 and 39, and he answered and said unto them, the words of Amashiach Yahushai, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. So the men of the, of the Lord, the prophets, are the sign that the Most High has given in the last days. He chose to send the prophets out as is that sign. He said, the scriptures say that, that he sent out the apostles last, those that are sent out, which are the believers, to do what? To, to make ready the way for the coming of our Lord, to preach this word and to recover and awaken the elect and help seal the elect. So that's the sign, that's the symbol that the Most High has used along with these other signs that are also sure signs of the coming of a Mashiach Yahweh which is the, the signs of the power, of, you know, the power in the, in the heavens and the earth. And the only power, Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai. So with that, I hope that was edifying. Barakatay Yahweh. Call hello Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahushai. Ba'ashim Rekaha Kodash. Double honor as always. Them Yah to the elder apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, love, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. Habayath Madabada, the house of David, the brothers laboring day in and day out to make their calling of election sure. Help us seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord. Hamashiach Yahushai is at hand and to the Akim and Akwaf. The Akyawa Akwathya, who also listen and believe on the glorious gospel of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, that's being preached worldwide on the four corners of the earth. Unto you I say Shalom. So Shalom to the hopeful elect.